A billion ton asteroid slammed into Earth at 65,000 kilometers per hour, and in minutes, 75% of all species were gone. The skies turned black, the oceans boiled, and the age of the dinosaurs ended in fire and ash. But that wasn't the end of life on Earth. It was the beginning of something entirely different. In the silence that followed, tiny mammals crawled out of burrows, giant birds ruled the forests, and whales still had legs. Evolution didn't hit pause, it hit fast forward. New giants rose, old survivors adapted, and the planet transformed in ways few today ever hear about. So what really happened in the forgotten era after the dinosaurs disappeared? The world doesn't end when dinosaurs disappear, it resets. 66 million years ago, Earth gets hit by a 10 kilometer wide asteroid moving at nearly 65,000 kilometers per hour. The impact is violent. A crater 30 kilometers deep forms in what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. Temperatures spike, fires rage. A tsunami as tall as a mountain tears across continents. Sulfuric acid rains from the sky. Light disappears, and in less than a day, the reign of the non-avian dinosaurs ends. It's the fifth mass execution, and it wipes out 75% of life on Earth. But the moment the giants fall, a forgotten era begins. And this is where you come in, because the creatures that survive, they're smaller, smarter, and sneakier. Like Purgatorius, a palm-sized mammal with a long tail, sharp senses, and a serious advantage. It's nocturnal. Dinosaurs needed light to hunt. Purgatorius didn't. While the sky stayed dark for weeks, this tree-dwelling insectivore kept going. The early survivors are a strange bunch. You've got lizards, turtles, snakes, and crocodiles, but most large reptiles vanish. On land, the bigger the body, the harder the fall. And in the sea, ammonites, giant marine reptiles, and 98% of coral species disappear. Only creatures that dig in, burrow, or hibernate have a shot. What's left is chaos. The food chain collapses. Plants die without sunlight. Herbivores lose their meals. Carnivores starve. The oceans turn acidic. Plankton, the base of the marine food web, start dying off. And as temperatures crash, Earth turns cold and lifeless. Forests vanish, flowers wilt, even bugs struggle to survive. Yet, some ecosystems adapt fast. Mammals and birds, warm-blooded and resourceful, take the lead. Birds, the only dinosaurs to survive, adapt to changing conditions. Mammals with fur and fast metabolisms are best built for survival. And the smaller they are, the better. Less food, less exposure, more chances to hide and wait it out. Within just a few million years, mammals start branching out. Without dinosaurs blocking the way, they evolve rapidly. The ones that used to scurry beneath ferns and hide in burrows now move into open spaces. They grow bigger. They hunt in packs. They eat new things. And they start taking over niches the dinosaurs left behind. But this rise doesn't happen in a vacuum. The world around them keeps shifting. Continental plates move. Gondwana, the ancient southern landmass, breaks apart. Australia drifts away, carrying its weird and wonderful life forms with it. Dense forests spread across continents. Ocean currents change. CO2 levels shift again. Climate gets warmer, then colder. And over the next 10 million years, Earth sees one transformation after another. In the water, mammals start making waves too. Whales evolve from land-dwelling animals. Seals show up. Sharks hang on. So do modern fish. Coral reefs slowly rebuild. But the dominant marine creatures are different now. No more mosasaurs. No more giant marine crocodiles. The new ocean rulers breathe through blowholes and sing across the seas. Back on land, flowering plants thrive. Insects bounce back. Pollinators like bees adapt and spread. Plants evolve new shapes, colors, and scents to attract them. And the forests explode with life. Birds evolve rapidly. Some become massive. Others stay small and agile. Mammals diversify, taking over every available role. Herbivores, omnivores, predators all evolve from those tiny survivors who lived in the shadows. Yet, the scars of the asteroid remain. The crater exists. The rocks bear traces of ash, soot, and iridium, a rare element linked to meteorites. Fossils show the abrupt end of species. Bone beds in North America, Europe, and Asia reveal a sharp line. Above it, mammals. Below it, dinosaurs. The cretaceous paleogene extinction reshapes evolution. It doesn't just erase species, it reshuffles everything. Before the impact, dinosaurs controlled every major environment, land, sea, and sky. After it, mammals gain momentum, and fast. 
Within just 10 million years, these mammals evolved into the first large predators and plant eaters. Some resemble modern badgers or small deer. Others look like raccoons or foxes, and deep in the forest, primates emerge. Small tree-dwelling social creatures, descendants of Purgatorius. They use tools, they groom each other, and eventually they walk upright. This post-dinosaur era isn't flashy. You won't find creatures the size of buses or monsters with teeth the length of bananas, but it's one of the most important chapters in Earth's history. Because here, in this forgotten era, the seeds of modern life are planted. You get the first bats, whales, elephants, and cats. You get the rise of grasses, and with the grasses comes grazing animals, herds of early horses, rhinos, and deer. These open grasslands become the next frontier. Predators evolve too, big cats, hyenas, bears, wolves, and eventually, something even more unexpected, humans. But before that happens, the animal kingdom enters a wild phase of experimentation. Massive birds like Gastornis rule the land, towering over most mammals. This bird grows up to two meters tall, or about seven feet. It can't fly, but it doesn't need to. Its powerful beak and claws are enough to make it a top predator. Then there's Teratornis, the monster bird of the skies. With a wingspan of 5 meters or over 16 feet, it's the largest flying bird of its time, swooping down like a feathered missile to grab small mammals from open plains. But this age of giant birds doesn't last forever. As mammals grow bigger and faster, the birds lose their advantage. You start seeing hoofed mammals stepping up, some evolving into what we now call early horses, rhinos, and tapers. At first, they're pretty similar. Think of a dog-sized animal with paw-like feet and a mouthful of teeth built for chewing soft leaves. One of them is called Hyracotherium, just 60 centimeters long and 20 tall. No hooves yet, just four toes in front and three in the back, like padded paws. Another is Heptadon, an early taper that hasn't yet developed its little trunk. And there's Hyracheus, one of the first proto-rhinos, still hornless, but starting to bulk up. These animals don't all live in the same place or eat the same food, which helps them avoid competing too much. Still, danger is never far, especially with apex predators like Gastornis or Teratornis patrolling the skies and forests. Over time, new species start pushing their limits, running faster, jumping farther, gliding, even flying. One herbivore, Phenacotus, is a great example. It's around 1.5 meters long, with long legs and teeth strong enough to chew tougher plants. It walks on five full fingers, no hooves yet, but these fingers will one day evolve into the sturdy hoofed limbs we see on modern ungulates. As the landscape changes, mammals fill every niche. Forests start giving way to grasslands. Animals split into specialized roles. Some run, some swim, others dig or fly. A few evolve into swimmers like early whales. Others take to the skies like primitive bats. Meanwhile, a new wave of heavy hitters moves in. Brontotherium, which looks like a rhino but grows as large as an elephant. It stretches five meters long and weighs over five tons. It feeds on soft shoots and leaves. At its side is Hydrocodon, a pony-sized runner with no horn and a big head. It thrives in open grasslands with legs built for speed. But you can't have big herbivores without predators keeping them in check. Enter the Creodonts, beasts like Hyenodon. Its name literally means hyena teeth, and it's got the attitude to match. Long tail, sharp claws, strong jaws, and the speed to back it up. It hunts, but it also scavenges, covering dead prey with waste to hide it from others. This thing isn't shy. Standing up to 1.5 meters tall and stretching 3 meters long, Hyenodon even challenges top predators. It can run 55 kilometers per hour, or about 35 miles per hour. Now, something else is happening in the trees. Small, nimble mammals are evolving traits that feel familiar. Opposable thumbs, close-set eyes, bigger brains. These are the first primates. They start small, think hamster to squirrel size. One early group is the Plesiodapiforms, descended from insect-eating tree dwellers. One of the earliest is Purgatorius, that same small survivor from the dinosaur apocalypse. It now multiplies across tropical forests. They're not quite true primates yet. Their brains are still small. Their hands have claws, but soon everything changes. By 55 million years ago, the first real primates appear. They have flattened nails instead of claws, thumbs that grasp, and eyes at the front of their heads for 3D vision. These changes help them move through branches, judge distance, and find food with more precision. A new kind of animal appears, Altiatlasius, the earliest true simian. 
It spreads through the Northern Hemisphere, paving the way for baboons, gorillas, and eventually us. The eyes grow closer together, binocular vision improves, the brain expands, mothers care for their young longer. Social structures become more complex. Primates now live in groups ranging from a few to hundreds. They eat everything, fruit, insects, meat, and their bodies adapt to all sorts of environments. Some hang by their tails, others leap, and eventually some even walk upright. Meanwhile, down below, a new wave of climbers explores the treetops, but that's not an easy life. One wrong step means falling. So, species like Carpolestes develop long fingers and opposable thumbs to grip tightly. It's about the size of a hamster, and while it can climb, it's not ready to leap between branches just yet. Its eyes are still on the sides, so it's harder to judge distance, but that'll evolve too. On the ground, you find another kind of mammal getting bolder. Corypidon is one of them. It's an herbivore, amphibious like an early hippo. Weighing about 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds, it's massive for the time. It feeds on aquatic plants in swamps, wades in the water, and uses its size as defense. But then, something wild happens. Whales show up, or at least the ancestors of whales. Basilosaurus is one. Despite the name, it's not a lizard, it's a mammal. Long, powerful, and built like a submarine. It has teeth, tiny hind limbs, and swims using a large tail and paddle-shaped arms. At this point, its nostrils are halfway up its snout. Not quite blowholes yet, but evolution is already working on it. Another is Protocetus, which can still walk on land with small legs but is clearly more suited for swimming. These early whales hunt fish and crabs in the coastal shallows, eventually adapting to fully aquatic life. Legs shrink, nostrils move, and hearing adapts to underwater acoustics. Birds still happen on land, but not for long. Then come the bats. Oniconic Terrace shows up with wings stretching 35 centimeters across. It can fly, but it can't hang upside down yet. Over time, they perfect flapping flight, which gives them a unique edge, chasing insects at night while other animals sleep. And gliders like Dermopterans join them, launching from trees and stretching skin cells between limbs to glide up to 100 meters. Now as grasslands spread, something else transforms, plants. Flowering plants evolve into fast-growing grasses. These can survive being grazed, chopped, or stomped. They don't give up easily. Herbaceous plants dominate, feeding everything from bugs to elephants. They also spread fast thanks to animals, wind, and water. The expansion of grassland supports a massive shift in herbivore populations. Animals adapt to constant grazing with continuously growing teeth. They evolve complex digestive systems. This is the golden age for hooved animals. And what about birds? They're the ultimate survivors of the dinosaur world. Their ancestors were small, fast predators from the Jurassic. Take Archaeopteryx. It looks like a blend of reptile and bird. It had feathers for insulation, not just for flight. Over time, birds refined feathers into tools for flying, hiding, attracting mates, and even warming eggs. And flight? That came in stages. First gliding, then flapping, then soaring. By now, most modern bird orders have taken shape. From kiwis to hawks to hummingbirds, the diversity explodes. Today, over 10,000 bird species trace their roots back to this moment. As climates shift again due to volcanoes and continental drifts, birds adapt. Cooling temperatures and changing habitats drive speciation. Glaciation patterns create evolutionary pressure, reshaping the planet once more. Continents shift. The Alps rise, India slams into Asia, and forms the Himalayas. Around 34 million years ago, Earth cools dramatically. The North Atlantic opens up, sea currents change, glaciers take hold in Antarctica, new seasons form, trees give way to grass, savannas and open plains dominate the map. With this shift, small forest grazers fade out, big grazers move in. Some develop continuously growing teeth, others grow faster legs. Evolution favors animals that can run long distances and chew tough grasses. New hoofed mammals appear, proto-camels, forked horned creatures, early deer, tiny giraffes. Males fight with horns, females don't grow them. Carnivores follow suit, evolving better teeth and stronger jaws. Some become wolves, others turn into cats. The saber-toothed ones dominate with massive fangs that can pierce deep into prey. These adaptations show up in multiple carnivore lineages, a sign of how powerful evolution becomes when survival is on the line. Rodents start small but move fast. Their teeth never stop growing, perfect for gnawing through seeds, bark, or bone. 
They spread across continents. Some go aquatic, like beavers, others burrow, and some, like Phoberamis, grow massive, up to 700 kilograms, part of the same group as today's capybaras. And then elephants enter the scene. Starting small, primitive proboscideans, like Borotherium, weigh no more than a pig and spend time in swamps. They don't have trunks yet, just thick lips. Over time, trunks evolve to help reach food. Legs get thicker, bodies bulk up. Eventually, you get the real giants, elephants that stand over 4 meters tall and weigh 6 tons. That's the world life rebuilds after dinosaurs. It's not just about who survives, it's about who adapts, who changes, who takes a chance on wings, trunks, teeth, or brains. And thanks to that wild evolutionary ride, here we are. If this mind-blowing journey through the Earth's forgotten chapters made you rethink everything you thought you knew about life after dinosaurs, go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more untold stories from deep time. Drop a comment to let us know your favorite post-dinosaur species, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a discovery.